Thanks for joining in as we talk about the direct renin inhibitors. Aliskarin is currently the only available direct renin inhibitor. Aliskarin is part of a series of drug groups that affect the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. The other two drug groups include the ACE inhibitors and the angiotensin II receptor blockers. While aliskarin is effective in decreasing blood pressure, other better studied medications typically are recommended before aliskarin because there are concerns of side effects. I include aliskyrin here for two reasons. And firstly, when we're talking about the drugs of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, my students often wonder why don't we just block renin? And we need to answer that question, but also we need to look at aliskyrin to get a really good, clear picture of the drugs of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. In our lesson about the ACE inhibitors, we went into some detail about the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. And we're just going to have a summary of that right here. When the blood pressure is too low at the level of the kidneys, or if there's too little salt, or if there's a fight or flight response, the adrenaline response, the kidneys are going to release renin. So renin goes through the bloodstream and finds angiotensinogen and cleaves it, enzymatically cleaves it to angiotensin 1. The angiotensin 1 is still not a very active hormone. But when it meets up with angiotensin-converting enzyme, or ACE, the angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2, which is that super stress hormone. Angiotensin 2 directly stimulates the kidneys to hold more water, keep more water in the system. Angiotensin II binds to the endothelial cells across the body, yielding a very potent vasoconstriction. And that vasoconstriction eventually leads to chronic remodeling changes in the blood vessels. Angiotensin II contributes to the ventricular remodeling, so the remodeling of the heart. It binds to the receptors on the adrenal gland, promoting the secretion of aldosterone, the salt saver, and as the aldosterone goes through the kidneys, it's going to save more salt and along with it save more water, increasing, once again, the blood pressure. And then finally, angiotensin II stimulates the pituitary gland to release ADH, or antidiuretic hormone, which is the water saver. And water saver, of course, that's going to raise the blood pressure as well. So renin is the first enzyme in the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. And direct renin inhibitors will bind to the active site of the renin and make sure that it doesn't participate in the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. The ACE inhibitors and the angiotensin II blockers are the other two drug groups that affect that system. They control blood pressure really well, but with chronic use, what happens is that they oftentimes raise the amount of renin in the system and therefore the blood pressure starts going back up again. Therefore, scientists have been looking for a direct renin inhibitor since the 1970s. And aliskyrin is actually a third generation renin inhibitor. But most physicians don't think that aliskyrin is worth the risks. 
For instance, in 2011, there was a study, a drug trial of Aliskyrin that was halted after discovering that there was an increased level of strokes, significant increases in kidney complications, significant increases in hyperkalemia, and in low blood pressure. One thing that's important as far as a take-home message with respect to uh, drugs that could be potentially nephrotoxic is that history has shown us that you don't combine two nephrotoxic agents. Even if it's not on the label of not combining this with another drug that you know to be nephrotoxic, it's to be avoided. So, for instance, aliskyrin, if the person was on aliskyrin, you would not actually place them on a non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug or aspirin, for instance, because they decrease the protective prostaglandins.